On day one, I spawned in as a land shark, the most awesome carnivore ever. I'm a real fish out of water. I've got nine hearts from the start because sharks are naturally born tough. And even though I'm tiny, I still have a bite. Looking around, I saw that my starting area was a desert. Or should I say, a sea of sand. But there aren't any other sea creatures anywhere. I wanted to go find some fish to eat, so I started swimming through the land in search of a nice meal. Da -dum, 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 da I eventually ran into another animal, but it was a tarantula. I heard that they were poisonous, so I didn't want to eat it, but it definitely wanted to eat me. That's no way to treat the top of a food chain. Wait, am I even at the top of a food chain? I swam away from the tarantula and soon discovered that I had the ability to dive inside of sand blocks to hide. I stayed under the desert surface until the tarantula got bored of looking for me and moved on. Then I popped back up out of the sand. I didn't expect other things would try to eat me today. While I was thinking, a coyote tried to snack on me too. It took off a few hearts, but this time I fought back. As I expected, my bite packed a real wallop. I celebrated my win by chowing down on some coyote meat. It wasn't that tasty, but at least it kept my hunger meter full. I'd look for something better to eat tomorrow. Until then, I'd take shelter inside of a sand dune. On day two, I resurfaced and went on to explore the desert in search of materials. At a nearby oasis, there was a grove of palm trees. I bit a few of them down and collected the wood they dropped. Ugh, that tasted gross. This is why I need tools in the first place. I got sick of biting trees pretty quickly, so I crafted a wooden axe to cut down enough of the remaining trees that I could make a complete set of wooden tools. While I was chopping, an octopus fell down from one of the trees. That was definitely the last place I expected an octopus to be. But then again, I was a land shark. What's the big idea? Can't a guy hide in a tree peacefully without getting knocked down? Sorry, buddy. I had no idea you were up there. What is an octopus doing in a tree anyway? It's not safe to wander out in the open out here. There are huge spiders everywhere, and they're looking for me. I thought spiders and octopuses got along. You have so much in common, like having eight limbs and... Huh, that's about it. We most certainly don't get along. And I suggest you find a place to hide too. The spiders out here are looking for sharks too. Sharks like you. So they were hunting me. But why? I've said enough. I need to find a new place to hide. Good luck. The octopus ran away, but not before dropping some healing potions. He must have been prepared for the worst. I felt a little bad about taking them, but if he hid well enough, he wouldn't be needing them. On day three, I decided to make the desert oasis into my base. I may have been able to swim on land, but having a source of drinking water around was never a bad idea. So I started chopping away at the rest of the palm trees to clear out an area where I could create my own personal retreat. Suddenly, a wild emu came bounding across the desert towards me. It was surprisingly fast and aggressive, but I was hungry, so that didn't stop me from taking a bite. The bird's attacks did a bunch of damage, so I was grateful for my higher starting health. Emus are trouble. If only I had heavy artillery. A couple bites later, and the emu was defeated. It also dropped a delicious golden drumstick. That looks yummy. I gobbled up the drumstick and felt myself begin to change. I became a bigger shark and my bite damage increased to be as strong as an iron sword. My already great number of hearts also increased to 17. I tried my ability to dive into land on the grass blocks and found that I could now dive into those too. I bet this works on all kinds of blocks now. Now I can explore other terrain safely. I spent the rest of the day constructing my resort. It was made out of the palms I chopped down earlier. I also added a room for myself. To protect myself from mobs, I decided to also include a fence that surrounded the entire resort. On days four to five, I went out to catch some rabbits to keep at the base for a steady food supply. I was a carnivore after all. I spotted some hanging around by some cacti, but a tarantula scared them away. Didn't the octopus say that those tarantulas were looking for me? I decided to get to the bottom of this and confront the spider directly. I hid and waited until he got close, and then I popped out of the ground to ambush him. I gave him one bite to show him I meant business, and then I gave him a piece of my mind. Hey, what do you want with us sea creatures anyway? The tarantula was startled by my ambush, but chuckled like he was remembering a secret. You'll find out soon enough, taste a shark. Sue Chef has promised us tarantulas, a bowl of her famous soup if we bring a land shark to her. Sue Chef? Who is that? You mean you don't know? 
She's only the fanciest and most renowned chef in the entire world. Her seafood cuisine is legendary, and very soon you are going to become a part of it. But I'm not a seafood. I'm a land shark. Then let's see if your flavor is the same. The tarantula struck back with a bite attack that left me poisoned. I was taking gradual damage to my hearts from the after effects. That's one lousy status condition. I need to finish this quickly. My enhanced bite did the trick. A couple of those were too much for the tarantula, and he was no more. That's what you get for poisoning me. Even after the fight was over, I was still affected by the lingering poison damage, but thankfully, I had enough hearts remaining to wait for it to wear off. The total was way more damage than I was expecting. I even had to use a couple of healing potions I got from the octopus. I was lucky I took that tarantula by surprise. If he had ambushed me instead, that could have been it. I returned to the base to wait for my heart meter to regenerate. On days 6 to 8, I searched a nearby forest for some materials to craft an antidote to tarantula poison. I had a feeling that yesterday wouldn't be my last tango with those spiders, and I wanted to be prepared for next time. I found a patch of some plants with healing properties which I could use to replenish my potions, but they wouldn't be able to neutralize the poison itself. I don't like it, but I think I need to capture a tarantula and study the poison. After that, I started flopping my way back over to the desert I'd made my home. I made my way across the dunes until I saw a tarantula, then I dove under the sand to hide. It didn't seem to notice me, so I waited for an opportunity to strike. But just then, another mob swooped out of the sky and attacked the tarantula. Whoa, what is that thing? It was a tarantula hawk, the tarantula's natural predator. It looked really tough, but it was distracted because it was fighting the tarantula. I emerged from the sand and took the tarantula hawk by surprise. The fight was won before it even began. Sharks are problem solvers. The tarantula hawk dropped something that would solve my poison problem, a rare poison resistance potion. I ate the whole thing in one bite. Hooray! With this, I won't take any extra damage from the tarantula venom. On days 9 to 10, I explored some nearby hills which I could mine for stone and other sturdy blocks that couldn't be found in the desert. I had fun trying out my dive ability on a bunch of different surfaces. While I was diving, I fell into an area where a lot of carrot plants were growing. I'm going to take these and replant them at my base. Those rabbits will have to eat something before I eat them. As I was pulling up carrots, I felt like someone was behind me and turned around. It was a girl! She was dressed as a chef and carrying a really big knife. I hoped it wasn't who I thought it was. <laughs> I, Su Chef, have found myself another shark. And I thought the only ingredients out here were carrots. Oh no! It's exactly who I thought it was! See ya! Late come back! Eh, hey, shucky shucky! Even though I was bigger, I was still just a fish. And a fish doesn't pick a fight with a chef. It never ends well. I swam as fast as I could until I lost her, and then I dove into the stone. For some reason, it was trickier this time. That's when I realized there was another shark trying to hide. Unlike me, this guy was a hammerhead shark. I bet building stuff is really easy for him. Boy, I'm how glad to meet you. I thought I was the only shark left. So did I. If you don't mind me asking, do you know where all the other sharks went? That sous chef you just saw has been rounding up our kind and turning us into soup for her restaurant. Soup? Oh no, I hate soup. And I'd hate being in it even more. She must be stopped. On days 11 to 12, my new hammerhead friend and I went back to my base. I made him his own room to make him feel right at home at my aquatic animals resort. Because stairs are really difficult to climb for finned boys like us, I decided to build in some pillars that we could use to swim up and down between levels. I was out getting more material when I was attacked by a giant snake. Let's hope my poison resistance works against snake venom too. The second it sunk its fangs into me, I was badly poisoned. My hearts were reducing quickly, so I ran back to base and started working on a new way to counter the venom. I knew that honey could help with curing poison, so I went and found a hive of desert bees, which I carefully transported to a safe location near my base. Now I have all the honey I need to avoid getting sick. I went back to fight the giant snake, and thanks to the honey and my healing potions, I was able to outlast it in a battle of bites. The snake dropped a rattle when it was defeated, and I had a feeling this was the key to building my poison resistance. I combined the rattle with some of the flowers and honey I had collected earlier and crafted an extra strength poison resistance potion. I drank it immediately. I'll bet I can become immune to all poisons if I keep making potions like these. On days 13 to 15, I was fast asleep in my shark bed when I remembered something from long ago, before I was even a baby land shark. It must have been a memory from a distant land shark ancestor. 
Back then, all of us land sharks swam through the desert together in a big group, or a shiver of sharks. There was always plenty to eat, and we always shared with each other. But one day, an army of tarantulas showed up and started capturing the sharks and their sticky spider webs. Uh -oh. They dragged my ancestors to a huge cooking pot where sous chef was waiting. Pray bien. With this latest haul, I'll have shark fin soup to serve in my restaurant for years to come. She was talking to an even bigger spider next to her, who appeared to be calling the shots for the tarantulas. Eh, boss? When do we get some of the soup? You'll wait your turn. The other humans will get to sample my cooking first. Then maybe your spiders can have a chance. Uh, okay. Whatever you say, boss. Now, let's get cooking. I woke up from that terrible nightmare before I saw all the land sharks go into the cooking pot. That would have been far too scary for me, no matter how tough of a shark I was. How horrible! Now I know why there are so few of us land sharks left in the world. If sous chef had an army of spiders at her command, maybe it would be better for Hammerhead and I to keep ourselves hidden instead of going after her. On days 16 to 19, I was searching around the base for Hammerhead and couldn't find him. Huh? Hey Hammerhead, where are you? Are we playing hide and seek? There was a note left on my crafting table, so I read it. Dear Zozo, I'm going hunting for some more food. If I don't come back before tomorrow, it probably means that I'm in trouble. Please come looking for me. You're the only friend I have in this world. So that's where he is. He's in trouble. It had been at least a day since the last time I saw him, so going to look for him would be a good idea. I decided to go find my way to this trouble place he mentioned. Sure enough, it turned out to be a town for bandits and outlaws to the west of the wow. desert. This place sure does look like trouble, but if my friend's here, I can't leave until I found him. Hey, Zozo! Hammerhead! You were easier to find than I thought. I said I was in trouble, and here I am. Let's go drink some milk at one of these saloons. I'm paying. We walked inside one of the saloons and saw that there was a fight breaking out between some bandits. It seemed like a group of them were ganging up on one guy. Hey, that's not fair! Leave him alone! <sighs> Sharks! The bandits screamed and ran away. I guess the sight of a big shark and his hammerhead friend was all it took to scare them off. Thanks for the help, fellow sharks. Huh? You're not a shark, you're a human. That's where you're wrong. I'm a cod shark, the slickest cod player in the West. Yeah, have this crown as thanks for saving me. As soon as I put on that crown, I grew up again and had 22 hearts. I also gained a pretty sweet dash attack. Thanks, card shark. Did you both come to trouble to hide from sous chef? I do no rumor that you might want to hear. Are we sure we should trust this guy? Let's hear him out before we judge him. There's a legendary poisonous spice called the Chef Bane, which is said to ruin a cooking pot forever. If you sprinkled some of that stuff in her soup, she'd be forced to give up cooking. Then all the sharks would be safe. Wow, and you're really telling the truth? Trust me, kid, I know a thing or two. Even though it had seemed hopeless before, I now believed that there was a way to stop Sue Chef for good. All I had to do was find that Chef Bane. On days 20 to 22, Hammerhead and I returned to our base and found it under attack by those same bandits we scared away in trouble. This time though, there was a whole lot more of them and they were throwing dynamite. This will teach you nasty sharks not to mess with us bandits. Oh yeah? Well we're gonna teach you nasty bandits not to mess with us sharks. Right Hammer? Right. Hammerhead and I worked together and took on the bandits as a team. We fought hard against the crooks, but our teamwork was too much for them, and we took them out. I was feeling so inspired by our teamwork that I had an idea. I should add a statue to the base. Things were coming along nicely, and I made some good progress on the first part. You can sort of see what it might be. I'd need to add some blue materials to get the statue's color palette just right, so I started mining to see if I could find any lapis. It would be a long way down, but I had to start somewhere. Once I gathered some stone, I decided it was time to upgrade my pickaxe. So I returned back to the base where I crafted a stone pickaxe, which would help me mine much more efficiently. And if you want to be more efficient in finding my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can find my channel easier. On days 23 to 26, Hammerhead and I teamed up again when our base was attacked by some super tough rock mobs. Uh oh, those look like straddlers. We were able to defeat them, but their skin was so tough that a bunch of our teeth fell out. Jojo, my teeth fell out. Don't panic, friend. They'll grow back. As for the ones that fell out, I decided to craft a bow and make the lost teeth into shark tooth arrows. Time to go spider hunting. 
I hid in the desert with my dive ability and waited for some tarantulas to pass by. And when they least expected it, I jumped out and sniped all of them before they could even react. Now I can gather all the venom they dropped and make myself even more resistant to poison. I went back to the base and did just that. I had just enough time to drink another poison resistance potion before I heard someone outside asking if anyone was home. I answered it and saw that there was a frilled shark at the door. Pardon me, is this arrow yours? I found it while I was hiding in the desert. Yes it is, thanks for returning it. Also, would you mind if I stayed here? I've got no home and there's a chef looking for me. Of course you can. That same chef is looking for my friend and I too. We'll be safer if we stick together. I then added another floor to the base to make sure that frilled shark felt right at home. Then I added some guard towers next to the fence to make spotting incoming enemies easier. On days 27 to 31, I went back to the town of Trouble so I could get some more information out of the card shark. He was willing to do it, but only for a price. I'll sell you this enchanted cookbook for some of your teeth. It'll tell you where you might find all sorts of ingredients, including the chef bane. Just my teeth? You've got a deal, mister. I gave him a full set of shark teeth. In exchange, he gave me the cookbook. I opened it up and saw that one of the first locations listed inside was the Great Pyramid of Pizza. It appeared to be some kind of restaurant for rich mummies. I had a good feeling about what I could find there, so I swam off to the part of the sand sea where it could be found. When I arrived, I saw that the entrance to the Great Pyramid was guarded by a crypt keeper. He was standing next to a sign that said, no sharks allowed. Yeah, that's not gonna stop me. I fired some arrows from a distance to draw him away from the door. Then I dove beneath the sand so he wouldn't know where I was. When the Crypt Keeper was looking around confused, I sprung up from the sand and gave him a big bite. He hit me before running back towards the door, but with my dash attack, I was able to bite him again and get inside the pyramid before he could stop me. He tried to follow me in, but I dove into the pyramid blocks and disappeared. He eventually gave up and returned to guarding the entrance. On days 32 to 35, I entered the grand dining hall where the mummies were being served their pizza. I used my diving ability to sneakily make my way around the room. I was hiding under a table when I saw a flying fish on a platter. It looked like he was being served so raw that he was still alive. I decided to ask him if he knew anything. Excuse me, do you know anything about a spice called Chef Bane? Yep, I've heard of it. Sure wish I had some of it right now so I wouldn't get eaten. Do you know where I can find some? Quiet down, the celebrity chef is about to make her appearance. Celebrity chef? Oh no! Sue Chef entered the dining hall and rang a bell to call everyone to attention. She had tarantula bodyguards with her. Attention diners, I am Sue Chef and I will be your celebrity chef this evening. Our special is... She looked down and saw me under the table! Shark soup! Get that rotten shark! Yikes! Sue Chef and her tarantulas ran towards me, so I used a dash attack to catch her off guard. She struck back with her cooking knife and sliced away most of my hearts. I would be sashimi if I took another hit like that, so I decided to improvise. Actually, tonight's special is tarantula salad! The mummies hungrily turned towards the tarantula bodyguards and started to attack them. No! No, it didn't! Stop this! I made a break for the exit. I hate to dine and dash, but this time, I had to. While I was on my way out, the flying fish flew after me. Wait, take me with you. I'm a carnivore too. That's good enough for me. Welcome to the team, Mr. Flying Fish. On days 36 to 39, I convinced the others to let the flying fish stay inside of our base with us. What do you say, fellow sharks? I thought this base was only for sharks who were hiding from the chef. He's a fish and we're sharks. Won't he be afraid of us? It's fine, he can eat the rabbits we've been farming, and we have plenty for all of us. Once that was settled, I went to my room and consulted the enchanted cookbook that I got from the card shark in order to search for a new location to travel to in my search for Chef's Bane. Let's see here, the Great Pyramid of Pizza was a dead end. Oh, maybe I'll have better luck in the Marshmallow Swamp. Me and Hammerhead then proceeded to do some more work on the statue. The design was really starting to come together thanks to the lapis lazuli I had been mining. On days 40 to 43, I was on my way to the Marshmallow Swamp when I thought I saw another land shark nearby. Hello there, my name is Zozo. Do you need a place to hide? The mob that I thought was a shark turned around and I realized that he was actually a dolphin. A land dolphin. I'm good, thanks. I was just in the area looking for a heart of the sea. It's a kind of treasure usually found in the ocean, but for some reason, they can also be found on land in this place. It's pretty odd said the land dolphin to the land shark. 
point is that I did find a treasure chest with a heart of the sea inside, but there was a terrifying mantis shrimp guarding it, so I chickened out. They're all yours if you're brave enough. Thanks for the info, dolphin. Best of luck in your travels. I went to the place where the dolphin said he found the chest, and sure enough, the mantis shrimp was right there. Mantis shrimps were known for their lightning-fast attacks, so I knew that I had to rely on my toughness. I launched a few arrows before dashing into battle and biting away. The mantis shrimp knocked me back with a powerful strike, which did five hearts worth of damage, but that left him wide open. I drank a health potion and attacked him while he was recharging his attack. I did this a few more times before the mob finally fell. Alright, the heart of the sea is all mine. The door to the treasure chest opened up, and I rushed in. When I opened the treasure chest, there were some prismarine blocks inside, along with the heart of the sea. Once I collected them all, I used them to craft a new shield with some of my spare shark teeth. This shield of the deep could provide me with some defense, while also draining health from enemy mobs. On days 44 to 49, I made it to the Marshmallow Swamp. It definitely lived up to its name, as there were white marshmallow blocks floating all throughout it. I took a drink from the black water, and I realized that it was coffee. It gave me a temporary energy boost and increased the distance of my dash attack. There were a bunch of pink oozes jumping around the swamp, so I used them to test out both my enhanced dash and my shield of the deep. Once I was done cleaning up the slime squad, I heard a cry for help from the swamp. It was a platypus. Help! I wanted a drink of coffee, but I started sinking. Don't worry, I'll help you! I dove straight into the coffee and rescued the platypus before swimming both of us to shore. It was unusual for a land shark to be swimming in liquid, but I was very grateful that it all worked out. I, Platric Platypus, owe you my life, Sir Shark. Please, call me Zozo. I'm on a quest searching for a legendary spice called the Chef's Bane. Chef's Bane, hmm? You've come to the right place. You may not know this, but we platypi are experts in all things poison. Huh? You are? Absolutely. We're venomous creatures, too. Chef's Bane is the ultimate in poisonous ingredients, but you won't find any in this swamp. We'll need to go somewhere a lot more tropical. Follow me. With that, Platrick began to lead me out of the Marshmallow Swamp. I felt like I could trust him, so I decided to follow him. On days 50 to 53, Platrick and I arrived in a tropical region south of the Marshmallow Swamp. I checked the inside of the cookbook and saw that this area was called the Banana Pepper Beach and was known for growing the spiciest peppers ever known. Look alive, Sir Shark! We're on the lookout for a very special purple pepper, which is a key ingredient for Chef's Bane. A purple pepper, Platrick? I'll positively peek around every part of this place until I've pointed it out. Say it! Don't spray it! We split up and searched for hints of the purple pepper. I ended up at the seashore. Wow, I just realized that I'm a shark who has never seen the ocean. I didn't have time to think about that because I noticed the Crypt Keeper from the Great Pyramid of Pizza running towards me. I guess I interrupted his vacation. He fought, but this time I had my shield. After a few hits, he realized his health was being drained and he ran away. He won't bother me again. A little later, Platrick and I reunited. It seemed like neither of us had had any luck finding the purple pepper. We'll keep trying, Sir Shark. In the meantime, have a potion of poison resistance. You'll want to be practically immune when we find it. I gulped down the potion and felt its effect make me even stronger against poison. On days 54 to 57, I returned to base to make some improvements. After swimming in the coffee swamp, I was eager to turn the oasis pool into a more tropical habitat. So I planted some banana trees to spice up the place. With the trees in place, I decided that the pool needed a diving board, so I added that along with some decorations to make it feel far more relaxing. Now I'll be a land shark and a water shark, master of both worlds. Hammerhead, Grilled, and Flying Fish all enjoyed using the diving board too. It seemed like the base was becoming more than just a hideout. It was our home, and we were family. Eventually, Frill came over and approached me. Oh, hi Zozo. Hey there, Frilled. I noticed that you built the Shield of the Deep. It looks like it protects you really well, and I was hoping you could make me one too. I would, but I need to go find another Heart of the Sea. Maybe the cookbook knows where I can find one. I returned to my room to look at the cookbook, but it wouldn't reveal the locations of the Hearts of the Sea, but it would let me know where more Mantis Shrimp were. It was just a hunch, but I decided to give it a shot. I made my way over to a nearby cave where I figured another Mantis Shrimp might be hiding. I managed to find another chest like the last one, but this time it wasn't even guarded. Lucky me! I looked inside, and there was another Heart of the Sea! Soon after, I crafted another Shield of the Deep and gave it to Frilled. 
Thank you, Zozo. Here, I have some serrated teeth I can spare. If you equip them, your bite attack will be able to drain health, just like the shield. Wow. That's an incredible upgrade. Thanks, Frilled. You rule. I put those chompers in, and I could already feel more awesome. Or should I say, Jossum? On days 58 to 62, I was making some really great improvements to the statue. It's really starting to come together. Can you tell what it is yet? Just then, I noticed that the base was swarmed by tarantulas. The tarantula leader that I saw in the flashback was there as well, so it looked like this was a planned invasion. But how did they know where we were? I thought to myself and remembered the cookbook. Card Shark, he must have sold us out. Hammerhead was right not to trust him. I ran towards the base to help the others defend it. Rild and I both had shields of the deep and draining bites, so we could restore our health even as we faced getting swarmed by tarantulas. Oh no, this poison is taking a real toll on me. Right, I forgot. I'm the only one immune to poison. Go get some honey and cure your poison, Frilled. I'll go help Hammerhead. Hammerhead was the one I was the most worried about. He wasn't immune to poison either, and on top of that, he didn't even have a shield. Uh -oh. By the time I got to where he was, Hammerhead was being dragged away. Hammerhead! He called out to me while the spiders took him away. Make sure Card Shark pays for this. Don't worry, buddy. I will. And then we'll come save you. I was so afraid. There was nothing I could do. My best friend had just been kidnapped. On days 63 to 66, I returned to the Village of Trouble in order to get back at Card Shark for selling the rest of us out. I barged into the saloon where he usually hung out and saw him in the middle of a card game. He wouldn't be for long. Hey, Card Shark, I need to talk to you. Yeah, oh, well, if it isn't my old shark friend, I'm surprised to see you here and alive. You know why I'm here. You betrayed us. Now, now, remember the good times we had. I gave you that cookbook, remember? Your cookbook didn't help me at all. All it did was lead me to a bunch of dead ends. The purple peppers to make Chef's Bane weren't even where they were supposed to be. Of course they weren't. The Spider King already picked them all so that no more Chef's Bane could be made. It was part of his deal with sous chef, and this is part of my deal with her. He started throwing poker chips at me like arrows. I raised my shield and blocked them. Then I dashed in and gave the card shark a well-deserved bite. Good one, but I'm tougher than that. I am a shark, same as you. No, not anymore. He tried punching me, but I followed up with a harsh draining bite and defeated him. That was for Hammerhead. With Card Shark defeated, I left trouble and followed the many footprints that Tarantulas left in the sand. I hoped the hammerhead was alright. I don't know what I'd do if he got turned into soup. On day 67 to 70, I tracked the Tarantulas to Cobweb Castle. I knew that Hammerhead could be here, as well as the purple pepper ingredients needed to make Chef's Bane. There were a whole lot of Tarantulas around, but I was a whole lot of Shark, and their poison wouldn't work on me. I fought my way to the throne room and found Hammerhead restrained in a web. Zozo, is that you? Don't worry, Hammerhead. I'm coming to help you. I moved closer to the throne when suddenly the King of Spiders dropped down from the ceiling. Two sharks for the price of one. The boss is going to be extra happy with me. The boss is never going to see you again, Spider King. Not unless you get out of our way. Big talk for a silly little shark. Let's go. I leaped at the King of Spiders and started biting his long, scary legs. Ow! Is this what being bitten feels like? I can't believe I've been doing this for years. The jagged shark teeth were too much for him. The Spider King ran off, leaving through a pathway. After that, I freed Hammerhead by shooting an arrow that destroyed the cobweb prison he was in. Hammerhead, let's check where the Spider King ran off to. Maybe the purple peppers are in there. Good idea, Zozo. From day 71 to day 74, Hammerhead and I entered the secret pathway that the Spider King had left through. On the inside, there was a creepy dungeon waiting for us. Whoa, this place looks so spooky, Zozo. I don't want to spend too long here. It'll be worth it if we can find the purple peppers and make the chef's main hammerhead. But we were already too late. The purple peppers were gone, and there was a note from Sue Chef herself left in the empty dungeon. You underestimate me and my minions, Zozo. Did you really think I'd just leave the purple peppers here? Silly little shark. Only a chef of my caliber would know what to do with such an ingredient. I'd say I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's actually very funny to me. I'll see you at dinner, my dear. He and Hammerhead were devastated. All this work and risk for nothing. It's okay, Zozo. At least you saved me. Let's go back to the base and figure out what to do next. 
From day 75 to day 78, I brought Hammerhead back to the base. I didn't want any more spiders to invade us at night, so I put up a new layer of defense. Hopefully a little fire will scare those creeps away. That's when Hammerhead approached me and gave me an enchanted book. What's this, Hammerhead? It's the sharpness enchantment, Zozo. It'll make your shark teeth extra sharp and dangerous. Oh, heck yeah, just what I need. I went inside and applied the enchantment book to my teeth. And I got those extra sharp teeth just in time because the king of spiders who narrowly escaped in the cobweb castle was back and he meant business. Time to end this once and for all. As the king of spiders ran in, I lunged forward and chomped him. In one bite, he was finished off and that made me level up. I grew into a land great white with 25 hearts and the water speed ability, which made me twice as fast in water. Even though I'm a land shark, this might come in handy later. But that wasn't the only thing that the King of Spiders dropped. He also had a note, which I picked up and read. It must have come straight from Sous Chef. Once Zozo has been destroyed, find the straddler in the forest. You know what to do. I was starting to get really sick of reading notes from Sous Chef, but at least it could be a valuable lead. From day 79 to day 84, I searched the forest for the straddler. If he was somehow connected to Sous Chef, he might be able to give me some information. Straddler! Straddler! Hello! That's when the straddler emerged out of the forest, looking irritated. Yeah, I'm the straddler. What's it to you? I've heard that you might have something to do with Sue Chef, the villain trying to turn me and all my fishy friends into soup. Do you know anything about that? Uh, yeah, of course I know about that. I've been trying to take her down for years. Maybe, uh, maybe we can team up. That sounds great. But uh, first, you see that cave next to me? I need you to uh, grab a secret weapon I left inside. I turned and saw a cave a few feet away. And there was a secret weapon inside? Perfect. I'll be right back, Straddler. I went into the deep, dark cave and was surprised to find inside was nothing. Could there have been some kind of mistake? I went back and saw the Straddler standing in the mouth of the cave. Sorry, kid. I worked for Sous Chef all along. You really shouldn't be so trusty. He fired several arrows, and one of them even hit me. It was a tense moment, but I pulled out my own bow and fired back with even more accuracy. After a few arrows, the straddler was defeated, and I was alone in the cave. Whew, I really do need to be careful about who I can trust. On day 85 to day 89, I returned to the town of trouble to meet somebody I thought I'd never need to talk to again. The card shark who, after I'd beaten him, was taken and locked up in the town jail. Thankfully, he was allowed visitors. I flopped down into the jail to see him. Zozo, what the heck are you doing here? I didn't think you would ever want to see me again after what happened to your friends. I figured after everything that happened between us, you owe me some information I can actually use. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you nothing. How'd you like it if I bit through the door of this cell and asked you a little closer? Okay, okay. What do you want to know? Where can I find and defeat Su Chef? <laughs> find is one thought, defeat is another. You can find her in her kitchen on the Mushroom Island. But I warn you, Zozo, if you go to that island, you ain't coming back. We'll see about that. This shark is never going into anybody's soup. And with that, I left the jail. There was no time to waste. From days 90 to 94, I worked on some new items and upgrades to my base. I can't take on Sue Chef without the best of the best of the best. I added a bunch of new upgrades to increase the effectiveness of my bow. The power enchantment that increases damage, and the punch enchantment, which increased the knockback power of my arrows. Hope you like your food spicy, sous chef. And also, to give myself a little extra boost, I made myself a few potions. A potion of healing, a potion of regeneration, and a potion of swiftness. And sharks aren't exactly fast, but this should offset that. I'm sure to win now. On day 95 to day 97, I finished the statue, a giant blue land shark, just like me. I'm very happy about how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It made me realize something. In all of my time here, I'd only seen a handful of other sharks. There used to be so many land sharks out there, but now, because of people like Sue Chef, they were all gone. I couldn't let Sue Chef wipe us out. I needed to protect the land shark legacy and give our people a future. I'm gonna take you down, Sue Chef. You've made your last shark soup. On day 98, it was time to prepare for the final battle. I gathered all my friends together, the hammerhead shark, the frilled shark, and the flying fish. Guys, this is it. I'm gonna fight for the freedom of sharks, and all fish. 
If I don't come back, then find Sue Chef on the Mushroom Island and defeat her for me. That's when Hammerhead Shark, my oldest friend, stepped forward. Wait up, Zozo. I'm not going to let you go alone. Hammerhead, it's dangerous. She's going to try and turn us to soup. That's exactly why I can't let you go alone. Let's go together and finally finish this thing. On day 99, Hammerhead Shark and I swam across the ocean until we reached the Mushroom Island. Let's go, Hammerhead. No time to waste. The island was guarded by particularly creepy creatures, mutant spider pigs. They spotted us and started to crawl towards us. What are we going to do, Zozo? Don't worry, Hammerhead. I have a special weapon. I pulled out my fully upgraded bow and started firing, knocking back the mutant spider pigs. Look at that. I'm biting you without even touching you. Ha! Zozo, over here. I found some prisoners. I went to where Hammerhead was and saw that he had found a cage full of blobfish that Sue Chef had captured. You help them get back to the base, Hammerhead. I'm going to defeat Sue Chef once and for all. Good luck, Zozo. I believe in you. On day 100, I continued alone across the Mushroom Island, looking for Sue Chef and her evil lair. Along the way, even more mutant spider pigs started rushing towards me. I used my upgraded bow to quickly dispatch them and clear the way. Will you guys get out of the way? I'm looking for your boss. After defeating the last few mutant spider pigs, I saw a secret chest on the island, with a sign next to it saying, Secret Ingredients. Hey, that sounds useful. I searched through the chest until I found a bottle labeled Potion of Evolution. Wow. I immediately added it to my inventory and kept moving. Soon enough, I found Sue Chef's true lair. She mined a huge crater into the ground and filled it with lava. Wow. It was the ultimate soup boiling pot, and Sue Chef was there, throwing ingredients in. Welcome, Zozo. You're just in time. I've been working on the ultimate soup, but it's been missing something. I think it could really use a little shark to really make it pack a punch. Oh, I'm here to pack a punch, Sue Chef, but it won't be in your soup. Sue Chef started to laugh at me, and as she laughed, she grew bigger and more powerful. She also equipped a huge diamond sword. This must have been her final form. Uh -oh. Big talk, but nothing to back it up. You don't even have the chef's bane. How could you possibly stop me? Things have changed, Sue Chef. I used to want the chef's bane. Now, I am the chef's bane. I remembered my friends and got a surge of power and started to grow and change. I wasn't a land shark anymore. I was Land Megalodon, the biggest and most powerful shark in history, with 30 hearts. You wanted shark? I'll give you more shark than you can handle. I lunged at her. She tried to hit me with her diamond sword, but her sword was nothing compared to my razor-sharp megalodon teeth. Ouch! I was meant to eat you! You're not meant to eat me! She tried to hit me, but I kept lunging forward and biting her. Sue Chef was stumbling backwards, losing her balance. You look a little tense, Sue Chef. Why not take a dip and cool off? With one more push from me, Sue Chef fell backwards and landed in her own soup. She was finally finished! I threw the potion of evolution into the fiery pit, which caused it to level up and change into obsidian. Wow. Now no shark will ever be cooked here again. With Sue Chef gone, I returned back to my base, where the hammerhead shark, the frilled shark, the flying fish, and the blobfish were waiting for me. Wanna head out for a meal to celebrate our victory? Sure, anything but soup.